A watcher allows us to monitor a piece of data or computed property and execute code in response to a change in that data. Watchers are similar to computed properties, but their use cases are different. Before we get into that however, let's see how to use watchers. We define a watcher as a method in the watch option of the component's config object. View requires the watcher method name to be the same name as the data property we want to watch. A watcher has access to the most recent new value and the previous old value of the data property. It will monitor the data property and execute the logic in the watcher each time it receives a new value. It should be noted that a watcher does not return any value. It only works on other data, we don't use it like a regular method in the template. To demonstrate, let's use a counterexample that increments or decrements a number when the user clicks a button. We'll add a watcher called count to check when the number gets to 5. When it does, it should fire an alert. If we run the example in the browser and increment the number to 5, it shows the alert. But, although the example works fine, there is a potential issue. If the number is above 5 and we click the decrement button, it will display the alert message again when it comes back to 5. Let's imagine that the number is a volume control. We want to alert the user that listening to a volume above 5 may damage their hearing. But, we don't want to display the alert message when the user is already above 5 and turning the volume down. As mentioned earlier, view automatically gives us the previous value of the data property. We can use it to check if the new value is greater than the old value. If so, the user is turning the volume up, and only then do we display the alert. If we switch over to the browser and increase the volume, the alert fires. But, if we go past, then go down again, the alert won't show. Because watchers and computed properties monitor changes in data, a question that often comes up is when to use which. Watchers provide a more generic way to react to data than computed properties. So, technically, we can use watchers instead of computed properties, but it's not recommended. To demonstrate, let's revisit our full name example from the lesson on computed properties. In the example, we have two input fields that take a first and last name from the user and store them into their respective data properties. A computed property then combines the two names into a full name and displays it in a paragraph in the template. We'll change the logic to use a watcher instead of a computed property. But, this is where we'll run into some complications. A watcher can only monitor a single data property. To watch both the first and last names, we'll need to use two watchers. A watcher also can't return a value, so we'll need another data property to store the concatenated names. If we run the example in the browser, it works the same as the computed property example. Even though this approach works, it's not ideal to use in this situation. More code increases development time and is harder to test and debug. It's also more difficult to read and see, at a glance, what's happening. So when do we use a watcher and when do we use a computed property? We typically use computed properties when we need to compose new data for more than one existing data sources. An example would be when we created a full name from the first and last name data properties. We also use them when we need to reduce the length of a variable. An example would be when we need to access a deeply nested property in an object and bind it to the view. It will make our template less cluttered. On the other hand, we use watchers when we want to check if data or a computed property has changed to a specific value in order to know if we're ready to perform an action. An example would be when we displayed an alert once the number in our counter reached 5. 
We also use them when we have to call an API in response to a change in data. An example would be a user clicking a button to receive a new inspirational quote or upcoming events in their area. By default, a watcher won't run when a page first loads. However, many times in an application, you will want to display data from an API immediately. As an example, let's consider a film review application. Until the user performs a search, we don't know which film they want to see a review for. So, we want to show the most popular reviews of the latest film on the home page. Let's use a simplified version of such an application and simulate the API call with a console log. If we run the example in the browser and type a name, view will log the message with each key press to the console. So, everything works as expected. Now, let's add a default value to the film name data property. The idea here is that because we use the vModel directive, the default value will show up in the input field. And because it's in the input field, it should activate the watcher and print the message to the console. If we run the example in the browser, the new default film name shows up in the input field. However, the console doesn't display a message indicating that the watcher didn't activate. That is the default behavior for a watcher. If we want it to run when the page loads, we need to set the immediate option of the watcher to true. This also means we need to change the syntax of the watcher method. Watch becomes an object with a method called handler that contains the watcher logic. Alongside the handler method, we use the immediate property with a value of true. To demonstrate, let's make the changes to our example. Now, when we run the example in the browser, it will print the message to the console when the page first loads. So, if we did reach out to an actual API, it would be able to load the reviews for Spider-Man. Many times in an application, you will want to watch a value in a nested object. But by default, Vue doesn't watch nested data properties and requires us to set the deep option of the watcher to true. To demonstrate, let's modify our film example to use a nested data property object. We'll also change the watcher and set its deep property to true. If we run the example in the browser and type some data into the text fields, the console will show a message for each key press. View allows us to have both the deep and immediate properties active at the same time. It doesn't matter in which order the properties are defined. As long as they exist, Vue can use them. Vue counts arrays as deeply nested. So, when we're working with an array, we also have to specify and set the deep option to true. As an example, let's create a list of films in an array with the option to add more by clicking a button. If we go to the browser and press the button, the new film is added to the array and logged in the console. It's worth it to note that if we add the immediate property, it will display the list with default values only. It will not add Aquaman to the array until the click event on the button fires. If we run the example in the browser, the array is displayed with the two initial values. The new value will only be added once we click the button and the click event fires. In the next video, we'll learn how to render elements based on the result of a condition. Thank you for watching, we'll see you in the next one.